Time to talk a little Iowa football defense looking ahead to 2011. There'll be so many new names in the mix this year. I actually have a tablet in front of me. I don't really have anything uh, that I'm reading off or preparing. Most of this is top of mind, but I do have a few notes written down so that I can be sure to get out some of the thoughts that I've compiled in advance of this. Obviously, Iowa is replacing a lot of talent on the defensive side of the football heading into the 2011 season. Gone will be Adrian Claiborne, Christian Ballard, Carl Klug, Jeff Tarpinian, who didn't see a lot of action this year due to injury, but certainly a big loss for Iowa. Tyler Sash and Brett Greenwood in the back. So what you have coming back for Iowa, as in known starting commodities, you have kind of a two, two, and two. On the defensive line, you return Mike Daniels, who was a great performer inside for Iowa this year. You also get Broderick Benz back. At linebacker, James Morris, who had about as good of a freshman season as a line, true freshman season at linebacker in the Big Ten that you'll ever see. He'll be back as a starter, and you also have Tyler Nielsen. He'll be returning from a neck injury. Nielsen missed Iowa's last four regular season games, as well as the bowl game with that injury. He played a great, great Leo linebacker for Iowa in replacement of A.J. Eads last year before his injury. Had a chance to talk with AJ on the sidelines during the Ohio State game and he'd been blown away actually the way that Nielsen had replaced him. AJ is a very humble guy. AJ missed this season with the Miami Dolphins due to an injury he suffered in camp before the 2010 NFL season. And then on the back end you have Sean Prater and Micah Hine returning starters. So two starters up front, two starters in the middle, two starters in the back. But that leaves five openings and the names that we'll be cheering for next year that Hawkeye fans will be rooting on, some of them, most of them, not really household names as of yet. Steve Begek and Tom Nardo were two players that were listed on the 2D roster numerous times this year, but both of those players were on interior defensive linemen, not so much ends. When you look at ends, you're going to probably see LeBron Daniel out there mixing it up at one side end because Broderick Binge is going to be the likely starter on the other side. Dominic Alvin, uh, Alvis is somebody that you saw against Iowa State. He recorded a sack in that game. I had uh, dinner with Norm Parker back in May of 2010, and Alvis is a name that he brought up repeatedly numerous times, really like him, uh, really likes him. So that's somebody to, to definitely keep an eye on. Also, Joe Forgey is somebody whose name was in the mix this year on the depth charts as well. So that's what you have there, at least what's coming back to look for in the spring. At linebacker, we mentioned James Morris. We mentioned Tyler Nielsen. I was going to look to uh, fill the starting position vacated by Jeremiah Hunter. Will Morris stay at middle linebacker? Can he move out to the weak side linebacker position? That's also the position that uh, Chad Greenway uh, filled when he was at Iowa. I think Morris may stay inside, but I think he has some flexibility, so nothing's yet written in stone. Shane DeBona, late in the season, was listed as the backup at the middle linebacker, as well as the weak side linebacker, so his name will be in the mix. Jim Pogey will also be in the mix as well. And Bruce Davis, somebody who was injured against Arizona last season in 2010, injured his knee, did not return, he'll be in the mix as well. He's a middle linebacker, which makes me wonder about, hey, do you find your best three and play them? That makes me think, can Morris go to that weak side linebacker position because he's definitely going to be one of your best three. And it also depends on just how quickly Davis, uh, Davis heals from that injury. Sometimes it can take more than a year to get up to full speed, uh, and that's a troubling situation. On the back side, you saw Tom Donatello and you saw Tanner Miller in the two deep roster all season behind Greenwood and behind Sash. Donatello uh, at strong safety and Tanner Miller uh, at free safety. You saw them in the bowl game. You saw Tanner Miller, number 49, step, uh, stick his nose in there in the bowl game. These are two names you're going to hear. Can Jordan Bernstein uh, earn some time at safety this fall? We'll have to see about that. Anthony Hitchens made the move from defensive back to running back. Does he go back to defensive back now that the running back numbers have come in due to a new recruiting class? Nick Nielsen's Tyler brother, Tyler's brother, he's back in the mix there as well. Jack Swanson. Those are some of the names that you'll be hearing about this spring and watching develop. Also, talk about true freshmen. Can they come in and make an impact in the defense? I don't know that you can expect anybody to come in at linebacker uh, and really play a key role. James Morris, that's a once in a hopefully a once in a decade or two type situation. You don't want true freshmen playing linebacker. And I think Morris did a great job, but he has a lot of room to improve on, and he'd be the first person to tell you that. How about on the back end? Don't know that we're going to see any true freshmen come in and play safety, but I, I do like Loudermilk. He might not be the, the greatest measurable athlete in the world, but he's got good bloodlines, looks like a football player. Nico Law, can he come in and get his nose in there? The, the thing about defensive back at Iowa, 
you need a little more time. You need that first year to get in, understand the system. You know, Brett Greenwood, I know, was a four-year performer. Tyler Sash played early on, but you still had that first year to get in and get your feet wet. On the defensive line, Darian Cooper, he's big enough. All right, he's certainly big enough. And John Raymond, really like John Raymond, what I saw in film. I just don't know that you're going to see a true freshman come in. If a true freshman comes in and, and plays a significant role in the defensive line, a couple of things uh, you're looking at here is, um, one, you have a huge need because people are hurt or not good enough, and that's not a good thing, or they're just a, a lights-out player. So uh, that remains to be seen uh, which one it's going to be for Iowa. Hopefully they have people behind uh, the players that we saw this, these last two years in the front line for Iowa and can do a good job. And I'll close with this. A lot of people want to complain about the bend, don't break, about Iowa system, about Iowa system being predictable. Here's one of the areas where that really helps Iowa, is when the next man in comes along. These players do the same scheme, the same things over and over and over from the minute they arrive on campus. And what that allows these next men in to do is when they're thrust into the game, they're not thinking, they're reacting. And when you react, you play faster. You can be a very fast athlete. You can come in with a 4-4 as a defensive back. But if you're thinking about what you have to do because you're new in a system where a system's really complicated, it slows you down. The reverse is also true. You could come in 4-5, 4-6 speed, not blazing speed, but if you've been in the system for a year or two years uh, and you're comfortable with it, you're out on the field reacting and that makes you play faster because you're not thinking about it. That's one of the reasons why I think Iowa scheme has been so good from year to year because they can plug people in that know uh, how to play gap assignment football, play assignment football everywhere. The world doesn't depend on them. All they have to do is do their job. And if all 11 are doing their job as a whole, the, def the defense performs and the proof is in the statistical pudding. We'll see how things look come April.